Welcome to our weekly discussion of all things current in California politics. I'm Walt Gray. This week, we're joined by a reporter, Emily Hoven, a political expert for calmatters.org. Emily, so much of the focus in our state has been COVID. Uh, some people are saying that maybe too much so and not looking at other major drug issues in this state. Yeah, it sort of seems like there's been this epidemic going on in plain sight um, with fentanyl, uh, the synthetic opioid that has been killing thousands of Californians and hundreds of thousands of um, Americans. And for example, in San Francisco, which is one of the centers of the drug crisis, um, more than 700 people have died from uh, drug overdoses during the pandemic, which is about three times as many people have died from COVID-19 during that same period. So some people are wondering if you know public resources and attention are focused on the right issue there. We're redistricting the state. California's election map is being uh, redrawn in many areas. Some people feeling that it's maybe leaning right. How is that in this state? Yeah, it's kind of a paradox because here in California, we have this independent commission redraw the district boundaries rather than the state lawmakers. And if state lawmakers were to do it, um, it would obviously favor Democrats because of the fact that our legislature has a super majority of Democrats. And so um, by having an independent commission, you're going to actually take away some of that power from Democrats and you know, kind of apportion it more between Republicans and Democrats. But this has kind of frustrated some politicians because of the fact that the US, US House of Representatives is going to be kind of close this year and the GOP could regain control nationally. And so some experts are saying, why is the most powerful democratic state basically not playing that to an, its advantage when other Republican controlled states have Republican lawmakers draw the lines to favor Republicans? Uh, so it's that's all going on right now in mm. the background too. Yeah, I think the midterms are gonna be fascinating uh, nationally and California, which we have uh, time to visit on in future weeks. Uh, with COVID and the Omicron kind of still around, uh, what about kids who are not vaccinated? What about schools? The governor has been on Good Morning America and The View talking about Los Angeles and even Sacramento. Yeah, so we're kind of coming up against a deadline for some of these individual school districts that have their own vaccine mandates. Um, and for example, in Los Angeles Unified, the school's largest, um, 34,000 kids have basically not met this deadline and are at risk of next month being kicked back into remote learning or having to leave the district altogether. I believe in Sacramento, it's around 12,000 kids that are at risk. And you know, I think that's not super good optics considering that a lot of those kids went through almost two years of distance learning as it is and are feeling mental health repercussions and grade repercussions. And so you had the governor go on Great Good Morning in America and say, well, you know, yes, that mandate is in place, but hopefully there can, you know, some accommodations can be made and the school board can work on that, hopefully to keep those kids in school and not force them back into online learning. Cal Matters is a nonpartisan news organization explaining California policies and politics. Find their work at calmatters.org. You can also sign up for Emily's newsletter there. Emily, thank you.